Missouri loses out on one of its potential quarterbacks of the future. And of course, I've got more to say on the Caleb Love kerfuffle coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hail you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. Thanks for making Locked On Mizzou your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts, including now on the SiriusXM app as well, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And of course... My last episode caused a bit of a stir online, didn't it? Some feathers were definitely ruffled. Yes, I claim that Caleb Love had dinner on Friday night here in Columbia, and I want to talk about more on that subject here in the next segment, but I don't want to lead off with something that really wasn't all that, all that, I don't know, consequential beyond my own personal life. Let's actually start with something that's more consequential to the Missouri Athletic the Program, specifically the football program. In fact, if you really follow high school football recruiting closely, well, some big news broke last Tuesday that rather quickly ended up indirectly affecting Missouri as well. Daniel Raiola, I believe is how you pronounce that young man's name, the nation's number one prospect, according to a lot of people, for 2024. He's a five-star quarterback, a nephew or some relation of some sort to a former Husker. And from what everybody says, Nebraska was after this kid hard because of his Husker lineage. And a lot of people thought that New Nebraska coach Matt Rule was going to be able to lasso this young man into Lincoln, but instead he committed to the University of Georgia. This was said to be a pretty big blow to the Huskers. But here's the thing. Missouri had previously received, of course, an oral commitment from Daniel Kalen, a three-star quarterback from Nebraska. And back when that happened, my whole thing was, hey, this kid looks pretty talented. I like the fact that Missouri has its quarterback early in the class. And for the most part, well, quarterbacks who commit early tend to not flip very often. It's not impossible, but under this type of circumstance, though, clearly I think this was an indication that Daniel Kalen thought that, again, number one player in the country, Dylan Rayola was going to go to Nebraska. I, I don't think he would have committed to Missouri this early if he didn't think otherwise. So an interesting development there for sure. And now Missouri is once again looking for its quarterback. And again, if you followed, if you followed this closely, you would have probably expected, yeah, Daniel Kalen, a decommitment's probably coming pretty soon. And indeed, it did come last Friday after I posted my previous Locked On Mizzou episode. So. To me, this is a big deal because obviously if you're in Missouri right now, high school recruiting has gotten off to a bit of a slow start. And I thought it was a real positive that, hey, you get your one quarterback for the class and suddenly there's a lot of resources and just man hours that you don't have to develop into the most important position on the field. Obviously, Daniel Kalen is not the only option for the future at quarterback 2023, this coming season, Jabari Johnson will be a true freshman, the four-star player from Tacoma, Washington, who on paper has a better pedigree than Daniel Kalen. But the point is, you're probably going to want to take a quarterback with each and every class. So this isn't a great development for Missouri and Eli Drinkwitz because, as I said before, slow start to the high school class. Doesn't seem like Missouri's going to really be able to pick up its recruiting momentum, at least in, on the, in the high school ranks, until this fall, until hopefully they start winning some football games. Hopefully Missouri will beat Kansas State and things will, things will pick up. But until then, it sure seems like the momentum is really the headwinds, whatever you want to call it, are really pushing against Eli Drinkwitz and his staff. 
Now, moving to the defensive side of the football, well, we'll talk about my basketball information here in just a moment. But it turns out my football information from Friday, I'm going to blame Zach Blackerby on this one. I'm going to fade the heat to my boss. That's a brilliant idea, right? But no, seriously, Zach was telling me, he was hearing that the for Zach, for Isaac Ukwu, excuse me, the defensive end from, from James Madison, I thought, you know, his 15 and a half sacks the last couple of years at the D1 level, it's about as good as you're going to do from an edge rusher in the transfer portal at this point. Thought he would have been a really good addition from Missouri. According to Blackerby, he thought it was going to be Auburn or Missouri. Others were saying, well, maybe it's Missouri and Ole Miss. Well, those people were right because Ole Miss was the choice for Isaac Ukwu. So a bit of a miss there for Missouri. Again, just the momentum in terms of recruiting hasn't been great lately, although Cameron Johnson, once again, he may have been as important of an addition as Missouri could have made on this particular team, considering the struggles of the offensive line, in particular the center position last season. So it's not all bad, but, you know, I hate to say it, it seems like there's been more bad news than good news on the football front lately. And, you know, Daniel Ray Loa's Rayola, I'll get that right eventually. Da Dylan, Daniel, Dylan. It is Dylan. Good God. Dylan, Dylan Rayola. Again, the nation's number one prospect who committed to Georgia. His whole situation there, sort of spurning Nebraska, if you will, his presumed hometown school. That sort of got me thinking. Obviously, I'm a big time Missouri guy. No, I was not good enough to be a Division I athlete, folks. But but what if I were? Well, I would go to Missouri, obviously, and play hoops, play football, track and field, whatever the heck it might be. But what if I couldn't go to Missouri? Where would I go in that case for football and basketball? I want to get to that, and of course, but first we're going to get to the Caleb Love kerfuffle once again. Got a few more words on that whole controversy that I created, quite honestly, on Friday. But first, I do want to tell you about Built Bar, because if you're looking for a delicious snack but don't want all the sugar and calories of all the nonsense that you're going to find at the gas station, well, then you need the best-tasting protein bar ever built. You see what I did there? It is the Built Bar, and you got to try this, because if you're trying to look good, with your shirt off like I am. I'll be honest, I'm an incredibly vain human being. But I like to taste something good occasionally too. Well, Built Bars got you covered because they're covered in 100% real dark chocolate, all kinds of great flavors. My favorite are any type of coconut variety. And you can not only find them at Built.com on the, on the online, excuse me, but also at Walmart and Sam's Club here in town as well. So again, if you're close to a Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13-bar box with Bilt's Hit Flavors, Brownie Batter Puff, and Churro Puff, and you can thank me later. Thanks again for making Locked On Mizzou your first listen every day. And special shout out to some everydayers out there who are nice enough to reach out to me on social media, give me some well wishes after, again, the massive kerfuffle that I caused this past weekend. Obviously, you can tell I'm not taking it quite as seriously as some of you might have thought, but I do really appreciate, in particular, uh, one of my younger listeners, a guy named Eli. No, not that Eli, a different, younger Eli, one of my favorite listeners at this point. I actually, I'll put him number one. He sent me a really nice video Via his via his dad Drew last night really made my day. He was just saying, "Hey, sorry for all the crap you're getting online right now. Hope you hopefully everything's all good and you'll continue to make videos and and all that good stuff." Well, Eli, once again, thank you very much. I'm doing just fine. And and for those of you who are younger, by the way, if you're somebody who wants to make content or put anything opinions out online, well, expect some pushback on occasion. Expect some people to disagree with you, and especially if you're going to try to break some news and put some information that maybe isn't out there in the public, well, maybe expect the traditional newsbreakers to question that a little bit. And by the way, totally understandably, Eli, 
you've been apparently listening and watching to my show for a while. Well, there's tons of people this past Friday and this past weekend who were introduced to me for the very first time. And if they were skeptical of what I was saying this past Friday, well, quite honestly, I completely understand that. Who am I? If you don't know who I am, why would you immediately trust me? That would be a silly way for anybody to go through their entire life. But at the same time, I think I have a lot of everyday listeners who know that I don't just make stuff up out of whole cloth. And also, I think they know that when I'm wrong, I'll tell you I'm wrong. And I will make an absolute correction on this program. Heck, I just made one last week about I erroneously assumed that John Bowl, a, a guy Missouri is recruiting pretty heavily over on the basketball side, I completely erroneously assumed that he was related to Bowl Bowl and Minute Bowl, the former and late great NBA basketball player. Well, guess what? Somebody told me, yeah, that's not right. I looked it up, confirmed it, and immediately corrected myself on the show. Well, you know what? So far, at least, when it comes to the Caleb Love thing, there is no correction forthcoming. I'm standing behind what I've heard. I understand that there's been some people, some anonymous sources who've come out and said, hey, that's not accurate. I don't know what to tell you guys because I believe my source. And at this point, I don't have any reason to doubt it. I just don't. And it's not as though I haven't followed up here. Believe me, I've followed up and be like, are we sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? I think I've asked some form of the question, are you sure, about a dozen times in the past weekend. So until something comes out that actually conflicts the information that I have, that actually counteracts it, then I'm just going to stick with what I said. And by the way, folks, whether I'm right or whether Dave Matter and Gabe DeArmond or, or whoever is right, This isn't that big of a deal, folks. Man, it is obviously a slow news day, a slow news period, I guess, for Missouri sports because I never said Caleb Love was coming to Missouri. Now, that would be the story to me. Whether he comes to the Tigers or he doesn't, now that's the story. I'm just saying let's not lose focus here because that's really the reason I'm sure some of you probably thought I buried the lead here by not talking about this in the first segment. And heck, maybe the aforementioned Zach Blackerby thinks I buried the lead here. And he may well be right, quite honestly. You've probably got a good point. But I I just got to say, in terms of the hierarchy of importance, maybe this would have gotten more clicks if I put it in the A block. But I'm just telling you, in the hierarchy of importance, things are going to be important a week from now, a month from now, certainly six months from now. Nobody's going to remember this crap. But they are going to remember if Missouri missed out on a really good quarterback who ended up at Nebraska. That's something they're going to remember. So if you think my judgment was wrong in that particular case, well, that's that's fairly subjective, and I can accept that. But I don't know. For me, I just had about enough of myself this weekend and in getting into my nonsense. And again, getting back to sort of my original point here when I started this segment, if you're a younger person and you're getting – the type of, I don't know, hate for taking a little bit of an extreme word there, I would say, but that was the word that young Eli used there. If you're getting some hate online and your, your phone's blowing up, you're getting all kinds of notifications, people disagreeing with you. Well, that's not really natural. So here's what I did. I left my phone inside and I went outside on a beautiful Saturday afternoon and I went and picked weeds and I played with my daughters and that kind of stuff. And guess what? Now you're accomplishing something. You're not just sinking down into your own narcissism, getting even deeper into your own head and being like, oh, I wonder what people are thinking about me. I wonder what people are saying about me. You know, I'm sure some people thought I was responding a lot online, but quite honestly, considering the amount of stuff that I got, just pages and pages of comments on Gabe DeArmond's message board and all this stuff, at a certain point, I just left it alone because at a certain point, if you're going to be an opinion maker, you just say what you have to say. And guess what? People are allowed to have their opinions too. But what you don't want to do is get into this endless cycle online of responding to each and every single person and do it for you. It's not healthy. It's not natural. And it's not 
healthy for people's for your for your brain for all the talk of mental health believe me it's not good for your mental health to sit around and think about yourself all day and respond to every single person on the internet just just don't do it i promise you you get into that cycle i know it from experience i've done it before and it makes me miserable fortunately i'm 40 years old now and i'm a little bit smarter than that and coming up earlier i brought up a hypothetical if I were some big-time stud high school athlete, but for whatever reason I couldn't go to Missouri but could go anywhere else in the country, well, where would that be? I'm going to do football and basketball, a breakdown for you. But speaking of basketball, I think you should make a break, to a fast break, I should say, to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs because right now new customers can get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's right. $1,000 back in bonus bets. If your first bet doesn't win and tonight, well, the NBA Western conference and Eastern conference finals, maybe not as competitive as we would like so far nuggets going for the sweep. They're three point underdogs in Los Angeles. Got to say, I'd lean toward Denver. It just feels like the Lakers know they're done at this point. Felt like LeBron may have put his last bit of energy into that game three. But hey, if you disagree with me, there's no better place to bet on all the playoff action than America's number one sports book. Just visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on college and get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's FanDuel.com slash Locked on college, FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. So let's say, once again, hypothetically, I'm the number one quarterback in the country like Dylan Rayola. But for whatever reason, I don't know, maybe Chase Daniel is firmly entrenched as the Missouri starter or something like that. For some reason, I can't be a Missouri Tiger. So where would I go? You know what? I got to say, I landed on this one pretty quickly. And as much as I hate to pick a fellow SEC school, well, it's better for better than a, than a old big eight or big 12 school for me. So you know what? I'm going to LSU. I think I've never actually been to a game in Baton Rouge, but wow, those night games just seem like a party. Don't they? Plus I like some warm weather. I'm not too far from New Orleans. So you might be thinking, why not USC or someplace like that? I'm just not a big Los Angeles person, number one. And also, I'd rather be the big man on campus because I don't know, at USC, do I want to be competing with Leonardo DiCaprio for the song girls? I think not. So give me LSU. That sounds like that would be a ton of fun to play big time college football down in Baton Rouge. But I got to say the basketball part that one was tougher to me. I came to LSU a lot quicker than I came to this next one because when I start thinking about the Blue Bloods and actually attending one of those places, well, obviously Kansas is out. That's not even a consideration. Duh, right? Kentucky? Uh, I don't know. Again, too much of a Blue Blood. Too many too many beatdowns by Kentucky against us in basketball. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Plus, I just wasn't that into bourbon in college either. Wasn't that much of a drinker. Duke, North Carolina. Well, actually, I like that area a lot. Visited there many times. Just feels boring to go there, been there, done that. Again, UCLA, just not a huge LA guy. Fun if you're a, a rich celebrity, but I wouldn't have that kind of wealth or status. But in 2023, in basketball, I'm going to go to George Mason, believe it or not. Yes, that's right. Kimmy English, let's do this, buddy. You want a big-time job? Then, well, guess what? This five-star basketball player, this presumed number one overall pick in the NBA, again, this is my fantasy here, folks. I'm going to help you get there. And without delving too deeply into my own, ecodom my own economic paradigm, let's just say that, in my opinion, the George Mason Economics Department has been a heroic bastion of sanity in academia, in academia on that side, and I'll just leave it at that. So on the academic side, from my perspective, it would have been really tough to beat the journalism school experience at Missouri, but I do think 
having that economics experience in that department and George Mason, well, that would have been incredibly valuable for me and I would have benefited from it immensely. And plus, I don't know, playing some hoops in the D.C. area for a total, I shouldn't say a total no-name, a program that's been to a Final Four in the last 20 years or so, but just to help Kim English get his career really jump-started, yeah, I think that's what I would choose. So there you go, party at LSU, study at George Mason, and give Kim English the old Miller bump. How about you guys? You guys have an answer to that question? Where would you go if you were in that particular hypothetical situation? If not Missouri, then where? I'd love to hear from you at Locked on Mizzou, anywhere on social media. So until next time, I'm John Miller, and thanks so much for listening and supporting Locked on Mizzou.